Hello everybody, I'm Richter and this is quite easy problem from Adcoder, requested by many people. And by the way, if you have suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. This is multiple of 2019, where we are given a long string with digits and we need to count such subarrays that are divisible by 2019. And this number, 18,171, it is divisible by, let's call it M, M is equal to that. In other words, we want this subarray value, subarray, modulo m to be equal to zero. We need to count those, and the given string is very long, and is up to 200,000, so we cannot use anything that will be off and square or slower. This will be already too slow. Even if you just iterate over all subarrays, and for each of them, in constant time you decide if it's good or not, it's still too slow because you have two nested for loops over the beginning and the end of such subarray. For this sample string, the answer is free because all those three substrings, they are divisible and nothing else. Those substrings, they can overlap. There's nothing wrong about that. Here it's a coincidence that all of them has have length of five. They could be shorter or longer. That's also fine. It is helpful here to know an easier problem. Subarray sum equals K. I covered it few weeks ago, you can watch that video if you want. In short, the main trick was that every subarray is equal to a difference of two prefix sums. If sum of elements from beginning to this position is 20 and some of those elements on the left is 3, then this subarray is the difference of two prefix sums. 20 minus 3 is 17, you can check that those five numbers, they sum up to 17 indeed. And from that, we get kind of solution where if you want to count subarrays that satisfy something, like the difference of prefix sum up to j, let's say this is j, and this uh, index here on the left from subarray is i, the subarray sum is this, p of j minus p of i, and if it's in that problem it must be equal to k, then we have this equality, and we can do something with that, with a hash map, we'll see later implementation of our subarray divisibility problem. We'll up try to apply a similar thing here. But is it true that a subarray is equal to a difference of two prefix sums? In this case, where we don't care about the sum of digits, we care about the value represented by something. This, this subarray is not 9, it is 45. If you try to say that this is 2345 minus 23, it's not true. What we get here is 2322. Two, two. And this is not equal to 45. That's something completely else. Instead, if you really want to go with prefixes, you need to multiply the other prefix by some power of 10. At the end of this video, I will show how to make it work. But instead, we'll go with suffixes. What if I say subarray is equal to a difference of two suffixes? You can pause the video and think about it for a moment. And also, if you want to learn a bit more a bit more about modular inverse, uh, powers of 10, but also prime sieve, stuff like that, math needed for competitive programming, then consider watching on YouTube channel Code and Code. He created a long playlist of topics needed in competitive programming in math, starting from prime sieve through matrix explementation to Euler's, Euler's uh, phi function or totient function. I don't even know how to pronounce it. He also wrote on code forces. Uh, what topics he covered. The link will be somewhere in the description if you want to check him out. What about our difference of two suffixes? If we subtract 4, 5, 6, blah, 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 minus this shorter suffix, 6, 7, 3, 7, we will get 0, 0, 0, 0, 5, 4. So we got a suffix multiplied by some power of 10. Can I say that I want this to be divisible by m? Divisible by m. m was that value from the statement equal to 2019. I indeed can, and that's true only because m is co-prime with 10. If m was, for example, 50 or something like that, then it would change something. The, the fact that I'm here adding zeros to number 45, it would change the fact whether number is divisible by 50. But m is not 50, it is 2019. And just like, for example, number 39 is divisible by 13, the same number 390 is divisible by 13. The same I place here. And it's true because 
m is co-prime with 10. It means it isn't divisible by 2 or by 5. So I made the problem to be that uh, there are some two suffixes. Let's say that this index is i, this index is j. I want the following to be true. The subarray sum, so difference of two suffixes, s of i minus s of j uh, must... Well, we, they have that extra zeros, but they don't change the fact of divisibility by m. So I want this to be divisible by m. So as I said at the beginning, it should be equal to zero modulo m. And that's almost the same problem as subarray equals k, that easier problem. But can we get value of every suffix? You cannot store that in memory, the whole suffix, because it's very long. In C++ int or long, long is not enough. And if you store every each one of them separately, it's a square space complexity. That's too much. Instead, as we go from right to left to compute every next suffix, as we go from right to left through the st string of digits from the input, if we know already the value modulo m of this suffix, let's say that value is v, now we want to compute suffix value of this longer thing, it will be v plus new digit is 8, multiplied by 10 power something. It will be something like index looking from the end. So maybe I should say n minus i plus minus 1. Uh, because we have this number around, what, million, 700 something, and we add 80 million. This is exactly that number, 80 million. And this can be computed, uh, computed either with preprocessing or some binary experimentation, but the easiest possibility is if for this previous digit, I remember that power of 10, it was here maybe 10 to 6, if I'm not mistaken. If we keep that in some variable, like let's say power of 10, let's say it is int, we know this already, then this should be multiplied by 10, and we'll get power of 10 for this next uh, value. If I do power of 10 is equal 10 times itself, modulo m, then I can keep track as I go from right to left, um, can keep track of this power of 10 I need. So this will be the update I will do. V will be equal to V plus 8 times pot. That's the main thing we will do. And we can jump to implementation. There is string S, I read it, and let N be the length of that string. And for sure I will go from the end. And this new digit, it's a character, car in C++, I can get it value like this. This will cast uh, from character into integer value from 0 to 9. And then I said that value of suffix, let's say that I keep track of that in variable suff, becomes the previous suffix times digit times power of 10. Modulo mod, I created a constant here, not to type 2019 every time because I can make a typo that way. I need to also keep track of power of 10. Initially, 10 power 0 is equal to 1. Uh, let's think for a moment if I need to multiply this before or after this, oper uh, before or after this operation. Uh, this is how I compute every next power of 10. For the very first digit from the right, it will be multiplied by 1, that's fine. If the last digit is 5, it represents value of 5. Second last digit, if it's 2, it represents value of 20. But how do I use that? The same way as Sabara equals k. I can keep track of a map, later I will change that to something else. Count occurrences of this suffix. If value 50 occurred already three times, and now I again have value 50, I know I can pair them up. Remember, uh, I want something like that to be true. Suffix of i is equal 0 modulo m. So those two things need to be equal modulo m. And suffix answer plus equal count suffixes that already occurred equal to this. And update the count. This is just a comment. At the end, we need to print answer with, let's say, a new line. Mm, and now some speed ups. This could be an ordered map, but even faster. Map and an ordered map are quite slow in competitive programming. It's better to use an array of size, of size model 2019. It's a very small.
value of modules, I can keep, just keep an array. That will be like 10 times faster than map or an ordered map, even though the complexity is still the same. Uh, because this is just a constant operation, just like an ordered map. And is that everything I need answer? And it's very important to make it a long, long. Because possibly there will be n square subarrays, so maybe that can overflow for maximum n equal to 200,000. I'm f I think I'm ready to test on sample test. Here's that problem, link is in the description. For this, the answer should be free. And I got the answer of two. I actually remember what's that about. Uh, if subarray ends at the very end of a string, it is equal to suffix minus empty suffix. I forgot to do this. Count suff, suff plus plus. Just like I do it for every non-empty suffix, I also need to say empty suffix is also possible. If we subtract something longer, minus this empty thing, it represents a valid subarray. Let's run this again. This time I got free. Cool. I'm ready to submit. With C++. I mentioned that there is also uh, that thing with prefixes, and I'll talk about it in a moment. I recorded already this video yesterday in the evening, but decided that the video is too bad quality. So I'm re-recording. YouTube is hard. What about that alternative hardware solution I mentioned with prefixes? If I want to say that uh, I need difference of those two prefixes, if you just type 181781 minus 181, you will get some garbage like 181, uh, what, 6, 5, something, something. This is completely different than our subarray. Because what I need to subtract is this prefix minus 181.000. And that makes things harder. Subtraction of those two indeed gives us, if you count it, 718. So this is exactly the subarray. But now the equation, we've, just like previously we said suffix of j minus suffix of i, now it becomes much harder to handle because it becomes, if we say this is j and this is i, it will be prefix up to j minus prefix up to i times some power of 10 to, um, to count for this difference, that distance, it will be 10 to j minus 1, j minus i, and that must be equal to 0 modulo m. The idea was when we are at j, we are, are at i, we can count other prefix sums that match our one. But here we have this term. If I tell you that i is equal to 5, uh, and prefix of i is equal something particular like 75, you cannot say what prefixes of j will match this i. We need to transform this a little bit. It's quite common in math and programming problems that we want terms with the same index to be together. Then it's easier to do anything. In particular, it's very common in harder algorithm that is convolution, FFT. I want terms with i to be next to each other. If I multiply both sides by hmm, uh, by 10 to i, I will not achieve that. I will get rid of this, but the formula will not be easier. Let's instead divide. Uh, let's divide by 10 to j, both sides. Then it will be p of j divided by 10 to j minus p of i p of i times 10 to minus i, and 10 to minus i is equivalent to dividing by, by 10 to i. So let's remove that and say this. Uh, we have some strange fractions. They can be handled with uh, modular inverse, but let's get rid of that. By now multiplying both sides times 10 to n. And then what happens, so I unnecessarily uh, change them into fractions, what happens is p of j times 10 to n minus j. Uh, so this was 10 to minus j, and I multiplied by this. Minus p of i times 10 to n minus i. That must be equal to 0. So this must be equal that. Now, thanks to the fact that I grouped i's with i's, j's with j's, for every i and every j, I can compute the value of that modulo m and I can use the same approach. 
where I would just keep things in hash map, how many times this number, like 75 or 187, occurred. And again, I have 187, I will say it can be paired with every previous such value, and every such pair represents a valid subarray, because this equation I got is equivalent to saying subarray is divisible by m. I got this from all the transformations. As I said, if you want to learn more about, for example, modular inverse, check out that channel by Code and Code. Yeah, I'm going to now, uh, in next few, at least few videos, shout out some smaller channels that are also valuable, and you should go check them out. I think it will help everybody. It will help those channels and you because you learn something new. I hope you enjoyed this, and if yes, leave a like. That helps a little bit to a channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye.